And to the people that are watching us live on the internet, good morning. And as always, it is good to stand before you on this Lord's Sabbath day. So last week I was in Orlando, Florida, and it got a nice crowd growing down there. And so somebody asked me, oh, you took a vacation? I'm going to tell you something, I don't have no vacation. When you don't see me here, I'm in another state teaching another class in Israel of God, okay? The only time I called myself taking a vacation since I've been in the Word was the worst thing I ever did. But anyway, we're going to get right to the lesson. This is a lesson titled, The Wilderness, The Place of Safety During the Great Tribulation. The Wilderness, The Place of Safety During the Great Tribulation. You know, sisters and brothers, one of the biggest shocks that's going to hit this world is the people that call themselves Christian are going to be waiting for the rapture, and this great tribulation is going to roll up on them. And that's when the Bible said they're going to start looking around for preachers to kill and everything else. Because you are not going to leave this earth. If you should leave this earth at all, let it be in the first resurrection, you'll be among the one that's going to meet the Lord in there, then everybody comes back down to this earth. And during the time of this great tribulation, the, the, uh, uh, the only place that you're going to be safe is, is the place that's called the wilderness. We know where it is. You know, some people dispute it, you know, but, uh, but according to uh, uh, where Moses then went, this is on the Sinai Peninsula. They got all of the wilderness there, all of them. But then the question was asked, what if you're wrong? Well, that wouldn't make no difference because when the devil started to come up with rivers and reeds and uh, uh, vegetation and fruits, you're going to know that's what we're supposed to be. So the Lord is a God that always put out two, three ways for you to recognize his hand. And all you need to do is know where you're supposed to be going. So uh, uh, people... <clears throat> are looking to get off this earth because ministers have told them, see, the whole thing is there was a lot of years before they even found out about the great tribulations. And once they find out about it, now you had to come up, we're going to rapture, the Lord going to take his church prior to the great tribulation. Sisters and brothers, you can't read that nowhere in the Bible. Secondly is when the people came to the great tribulations, they say seven years of great tribulation. That is directly from Satan the devil. Because the Lord said, when you shall see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, flee. He's going to be there for three and a half years. So if you think it is seven, they teach that he's going to go to Jerusalem when they build a temple, set in the temple, and for three and a half years, then in the middle of the week, he's going to break the covenant that he made with the people that are over there then that's when tribulation starts. Sisters and brother, by that time, you have the mark of the beast all over you from pressure. That is from Satan, sisters and brothers. Now let's go and start this at Matthew, the 24th chapter. The Lord give you only one place and one place to be. And if you find out where that place, uh, 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 what Moses them are, was when they was coming, you will find that place. Matthew chapter 24. See, the Lord gives solid have given solid signs of when he's supposed to come. That's why, and you don't have to look at stuff like blood moons, which is a concoction, everybody running all over the place, dealing with that falsehood. And you don't have to be saying, well, the Lord might come this way, or might come. No, when you know the signs, all you have to do is know what to look for and where to look. The Lord is a God of wisdom. He don't deal with mystery. I don't say, well, you know, the mystery of the church or the mystery of the God. One time something is, is mysterious to you is that you don't know about it. And if you don't know about it, if it's God is going to do it, that's because you didn't read his book. Because he said, surely he would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his prophets. Then we're going to start this at Matthew 24 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, 
See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, uh-huh. there shall not be left here one stone upon another Go ahead. that shall not be thrown down. Now he's letting you know that there shall not be one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now that took place in 7 AD by the hand of the Roman general Titus. Throw it down to the ground. Go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, uh-huh. tell us. When shall these things be? Uh-huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They asked a specific question, didn't they? When these things going to be? The sign of their coming and the end of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you know, people are preaching at this time, this great tribulation here, tell me, this is when uh, uh, it's talking about, it's already taking place during Titus time. Sisters and brothers, this question is a long question. He didn't just didn't ask, when shall the temple be? They asked him when he's going to come and when the world is going in. But this is always what I warn people to pay attention to. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh-huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name, uh, saying, uh-huh. I am Christ, and shall deceive many. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ. And shall deceive many. That is a real important warning, sisters and brothers. Why is it important? Because it tells you where to look for the buck of deception. And the pulpit of the one that called himself Christian. Because this is where most of this deception come from, sisters and brothers. Have people jump up and say, well, you know, you call yourself Israelites. What you have against Christians? Nothing, because I am one. But I know what a real Christian is. You know why? Because we're the ones that put the thing out there and everybody else had to get on the boat that we floated. So don't tell me about, you don't know about Christianity. I said, that's one of the greatest uh, 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 jokes in the world. All of the apostles was Christians. And all the apostles was Israelites. The one that they want to be like Call himself Christ-like, which is Jesus, is an Israelite. How is it that the church ended up in the hand of the whatever? (laughs) I don't know what to call it. But it's one thing the Lord told you. There's nothing wrong with the name of Jesus or with the title of Christ, because that means anointed one. He warned you. To look out for the people that's going to see, deceive you in his name. I just like to make that point because the world is all messed up. Show you the world don't know nothing. They try to separate Israel from Jesus. Jew from Christianity. How can you do it? By the time you brought a non-Israelite in the church, they had already started calling them Christians. And the church was defined as the multitude. Y'all get my point? So take heed that no man is deceived, because many are going to come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Skip down to verse 14. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And I, and I want to read that too, is because there's another ingredient. This gospel must be preached unto all the nations as a witness. Then shall the end come, because when the Lord come, there will, be, there will not be a nation on the earth that I didn't know. And this gospel, what gospel? The gospel that we are preaching now. Not this stuff that's been on the wire since 7 AD, sisters and brothers. But they can't even decide whether the dead is in the grave or in heaven. Why you say that, brother boy? Because you say your mama's in heaven, but then you say there's going to be a resurrection. Who's there to be raised? Ain't nobody paying no attention. They haven't heard this gospel. It said, then shall the end come. Go ahead and read. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation uh-huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Go ahead. stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Now, most people have been in church all their life and don't have a clue of who the abomination of desolation is, let alone the holy place. So he can move and stand in there and you think the house that's going to be built is holy and you're going to think the man that's going there to set in is going to be holy. You're going to be so, oh, the Lord is back. Hmm. And you just looked at the abomination. 
And you just looked at him and go sitting in the temple. Let's let you know, see the word of God tell you all of the stuff that's going to happen. If the abomination goes sit in the holy place, then you have to find out what the holy place is. But if you're a New Testament Christian, you don't know what that is because you won't go back and see that when they set up the tabernacle of the congregation, it had a holy place and a most holy place. And it had a veil in there where you went in and you took the blood of the animal sacrifice and you sprinkled it before the veil. You don't know nothing about that because you are a New Testament Christian. Think about it, sister and brother. So when you see the abomination... Of desolation standing in the holy place, what it said, go ahead and read. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh-huh. Now then it's time to run, sisters and brothers. Even for us. But this is what this lesson is because there is a place you have to go. There is a place. Now skip now to verse 21. Why is it that he said flee? Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation. Uh-huh. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, no, ever shall be. Now, it's going to be great tribulation, sisters and brothers. Never have there been a time as bad as this time is going to be, and there shall never be a time after this. But go ahead. What's the next verse say? Go ahead and read. And except those days should be shortened, uh -huh. there should no flesh be saved. Go ahead. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. He said, now, except those days be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. I want to say to the people that's running around talking about that this has already taken place. There was not a weapon in the creation in 70 A.D. that could kill all things. There was no weapon. But you have plenty of weapons now that can destroy all flesh. That's why the Lord said he's going to have to shut this thing down and cut it short. Because if you don't, this man will kill every living thing on this planet. And he had the weapons to do it. But Jesus said, the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Didn't it? Let's go back to Daniel and have a look at this. Daniel the seventh chapter. See, this is the advantage we have over New Testament Christians. We can follow Jesus. <laughs> right. Because Jesus wants you to go back. I don't want to read that Old Testament. Well, you shouldn't read the New Testament because you ain't obeying Jesus. He's, ain't he the one that sent us back here? That's right. Sometimes I just look at these people. And it takes everything I can to keep from getting all upset and use a few expletive deletives. <laughs> 7 and 1. Daniel the 7th chapter and verse 1. Okay, read. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, uh -huh. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Go ahead. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Uh -huh. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Now these four winds, he's talking about four great nations that's going to rule this earth all by themselves. Go ahead. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. And these four, sisters and brothers, that's another lesson. But these four is talking about the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Go back and check history. When all of these guys ruled, they had nobody to challenge their power. They had no job. And so you will know what we are dealing with. We're dealing with the realm of man. This is what this angel is telling Daniel about. But we're not cons uh, 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 dealing with that. That's another lesson. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19 and read it. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, uh -huh. which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. He says, I want to know the truth about the fourth beast. This is the Roman beast, sisters and brothers. This is the Roman Empire. It was worse than all the other empire because the Roman Empire just wouldn't die and go away like Babylon, Medo Persian, Greece. The Roman Empire have, have fallen and it's gonna rise ten times. We're looking at the tenth time right now in the name of the European Economic Community. And why is it so different? Because it never left you. All these things that you call Christian come from Rome. Jesus never had nothing to do with Easter. He had nothing to do with Christmas. 
He never said one time, not even one time, that he was going to take you to heaven. That's why Paul talks about that other Christ. Not the Christ that looked like me that's going to sit on David's throne, but the Christ that looked like what Michelangelo painted. That's on everybody's wall. That's the other Christ. Why? Because out of him come Christmas, Easter, Sunday. You can eat anything, all you got to do is pray over it. That's where that come from. So he said, look. I want you to pay attention to this four beast. Because this is a terrible beast. He just didn't destroy you physically. He destroyed you spiritually. And this is what people don't understand. You don't think he destroyed you spiritually? Look how many people are going to hold church tomorrow. And say this is the Christian Sabbath day. But Christ, as his custom was, he went into the Sabbath day, the synagogue on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 23. Verse 23 and go ahead. Thus he said, uh -huh. the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. This is the fourth kingdom. That's the Roman Empire. Go ahead and read. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. Uh -huh. It shall devour the whole earth. Uh -huh. It shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Go ahead. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Uh -huh. And another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. See, that's the, that, the fall and resurrection of the Roman Empire ten times, sisters and brothers. And we know who the, who's going to subdue these kings. This is the religious head. And why everybody called Papa over that? But go ahead and read. What verse? This is what he all goes so going to do. Go ahead and read. Verse 25. Uh-huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. This is that little horn that's going to destroy three of these horns. This is the religious horn. He's going to speak great, great words against the Most High. What you mean speak great words? You ain't going, uh, you ain't coming to earth. We coming to heaven. You made a mistake. The seventh day can't be the Sabbath day. The first day is the Christian Sabbath day. You hear me, Christ? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. He's going to great, great words against the Most High. Go ahead and read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And that's going to be anybody that ca get caught outside of the place of safety. He's going to wear you out, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And think to change times and laws. He's done it already. The Lord said, my day start in the, in the evening. At sundown, the evening and the morning is the first day. The evening and the morning is the second day. He said the day starts at 12.01. How do you know if the day of change? You can't see nothing. <laughs> but every time the day, sun go down and dark come, you can say it's another day. So I'm just showing you how practical God is and how impractical man is. I'll see you tomorrow. Anybody with any sense of word, uh, understanding of uh, uh, God's word, know, okay, the sun went down. Tomorrow is here. At 1201, you're still trying to figure your, lot, your watch might be slow. You think you're in tomorrow and you're still in yesterday. <laughs> Did we finish that verse? No. Finish it. 20. And they shall be given into his hand until a time. Now think times. about it. And the Lord then puts a time limit on this now. When this guy come up, they're going to be given into his hand for a time. That's a single. That's one year. And, and times. And times. That's two plus one. That's three years. Go ahead. And the dividing of time. And the dividing of time. We're going to find out that that's three and a half years. Every time the Lord speak about this guy, it's always three and a half years, not seven. Because you get caught up on the seventh thing, you're going to get caught up in this thing. Now let's go into Revelation, the third, 11th chapter. Because he said he's going to be given into his hand. This guy going to make war with the saints, sisters and brothers. And he's going to win. Oh, the Lord wouldn't let nothing happen to me. You better read this book. That's right. Because if you're in the wrong place, eh, a whole lot of stuff going to happen to you. But don't nobody understand that. Well, you know. Like people, uh, well, why did the Lord allow all this stuff to go on? Because of us. He can stop it if he wants. Of course he can. 
But he said he wouldn't, so we got to live with the drama. If you're going to learn the word of God, learn it. Because that's the only thing going to save you. Now, here's this temple here that Jesus is going to sit in. This ain't the one that they're going to build over here. So the Lord did something here to let you know that uh, Gentiles are not going to sit in this temple because the Gentiles is the one that's in charge of the world now. We are in the times of the Gentiles. Who are Gentiles? Europeans are what we call white folks, sisters and brothers. A lot of people don't even know that. If you ain't, if you ain't no Jew, you're a Gentile. So Levi ain't no Jew. Naphtali ain't no Jew. Benjamin ain't no Jew. These Israelites, are they Gentile? But see, but you're always having people that don't have no knowledge always speaking like they know something. 11 and 1. Go ahead. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Uh -huh. And the angel stood saying, Rise, Go ahead. and measure the temple of God, uh -huh. and the altar, and them that worship therein. Go ahead. But the court which is without the temple leave out. Now look, he said, Now imagine the temple and the altar, and them that worship therein. That's why the Lord is going to sit when he comes. But he said, But the courtway temple leave out. Go ahead and read. And measure it not. And measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles. In the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And they're going to tread it underfoot forty two months. Why is it that he said given to the courtway of the temple? Because the Lord don't want this man sitting on the same spot that his temple. So what he did, he had the Ishmaelites build the stone dome of the rock there. Well, the Ishmaelites, they ain't Israelite, but neither are they Gentile. You understand what I'm saying? And when they come, he said, he's going to tread it on the foot for 40 and two months. How many years is that? Three and a half. But the Lord's going to have his representative here, too. You always have a representative. In every generation, people just don't know it. They usually call him crazy. <laughs> Read the next verse. Go ahead. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Uh -huh. And they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days Clothed in sackcloth. So you're going to have two guys here. They're going to have all kind of power. And they're going to be prophesying too. For how many days? 8,203 two, score days. 1,260 days. How many day, years is that? The Lord's trying to give you a message on your way to finding some out, isn't it? Now let's go. Because now, while this guy here, that's speaking these great words, that's going to make war with the saints and win, where is he coming from? He's going to be a part of the last resurrected horn of the European economic community. Or you can call it the resurrected Holy Roman Empire. Or you can call it Babylon the Great. All three of them fits. Now let's look at the resurrection. Let's go into Revelation 13 chapter of this great beast. Revelation 13. And we're going to start at verse 1. Revelation 13 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea uh -huh. and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns. Now, it, now Daniel saw four beasts rise up out the sea. That means come up from among the people. The sea represents people, sisters and brothers. But now he said he saw one beast come out with seven heads and ten horns. But this beast represents all the beasts that was before it. Go ahead and read. And upon his horns ten crowns. So them horns, is these ten horns are not the same ten we saw in Daniel 7 chapter. Each one of these, all these ten come up together. Remember, just one beast. And each one of the horns have a crown. That means that everyone have a particular head of state, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Uh -huh. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. Go ahead. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Uh -huh. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now look, if you go and look at the seventh chapter of Daniel on your own, and if we had read the whole thing, we would find out that this beast here have a part, a, a part of all the four beasts put together. But where did he get his power from? Dragging the Satan the devil. Go ahead and read. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now the head that was wounded to death was a Roman head. Remember, Babylon, Babylonian head came and gone. medo poison head came and gone. The Greek heads came and gone. But the Roman head down and up, down and up. And eventually, every one of these guys 
the term alone, ten guys tried to raise this beast and put a little ointment on it. Finally, they heal this particular head. That's another lesson. We're going to go into detail in other lessons, sisters and brothers. So one is dead, the, dead, the dead, uh, deadly wound was healed. Go ahead and read. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And I can see that because the world is wondering after the beast now. What day did they say the Christian Sabbath day is? Sunday. The whole world is running after that. How many people looking to go to heaven? Everybody. Everybody looking to go to heaven. How many people think that Satan have his own domain? Everybody. That come out of the beast. Everybody's following that. That means the whole world is wondering after the beast. See, evidence is on the table, sisters and brothers. That's one thing about the word of God. The evidence is extremely prevalent. That's right. That's why I get people, well, you'll see your interpretation. I say, man, can you read? Come on. We read the same thing, but that's my interpretation. What verse? Go ahead. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Of course, if you worship the servant, don't you worship his master? This is what people don't understand. That's right. They, Satan is the only one in the entire Bible that said he was going to heaven. So if you think that you are going now, who are you worshiping? Satan. Because if you worship the beast, you worship the one that sent the beast and gave him his power. That's right. See, people don't understand what's going on. In fact, people don't understand the struggle that we're having right now. This is a struggle for your eternal life or eternal damnation. But whatever, whichever way it is, it's going to be eternal. That's right. Go ahead. And they worship the beast saying... Who was likened to the beast? Uh -huh. Who was able to make war with him? Go ahead. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things uh -huh. and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So that's, that's, that dates him again, don't it? What time, how long he going to be in power? We're getting all of these three and a half years. I, ain't, I haven't seen a seven yet. Go ahead and read. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Daniel told you that, didn't he? Go ahead and read. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Uh-huh. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Say it again. This guy have, he got an end for you. He given to him to make war with the saints. Go ahead and read. And to overcome them. And he going to win for a while. Go ahead and read. And power was given him given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He's going to have direct power over four parts of the earth, but his power is going to infect the whole earth. It's all that simple. Headquarters is in Rome. He's going to move it to Jerusalem, but the headquarters in Rome, but do Americans have Christmas trees in their yard? And they Do uh, uh, Europeans have Christmas trees in their yard? Go to South America, you're going to find Christmas trees. Go to China, you're going to find a tree there. Even atheist Russia. So even though the headquarters is in one place, the whole earth is affected. I am trying to let you all see what is going on, sisters and brothers. Did you finish that seventh verse? Yes, I did. Now let's go into Romans, the sixth chapter. Because, uh, uh huh. The twelfth chapter. I'm not sorry. Revelation the twelfth chapter. I'm sorry. Revelation the twelfth chapter. Just back right up. Because, sister and brother, I want you to understand what's going on. Because we first want you to understand how long this great tribulation is going to be. Three and a half years, and that's all. If you waiting for seven years, you're going to get caught smack dab in the middle of the worst hell you ever been in on this earth. And if you don't have some knowledge, or even if you do have knowledge and don't have some real stamina, you might end up receiving a mark in your forehead that the Lord's going to cut you off like a rotten apple if he come and see. So why even go through that if you don't have to? That's why it's knowledge. That old thing, what you don't know won't hurt you. I'm going to tell you what you don't know will destroy you. And what you know will deliver you. Because if you understand this, you're going to know how, when the time comes, you're going to know where to go because the Lord is going to have the transportation there. 
They would say, well, what about passport? You don't need no passport, no nothing. Did Israel need a boat to get out of Egypt into the wilderness? When I saw that, I knew then, okay, I ain't got to do nothing but have knowledge and be right. That's right. Revelation 12 and 1. We're going to hook this thing up, sister and brother, because the Lord always have an escape hatch for his people. 12 and 1, go ahead. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Uh -huh. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Uh -huh. Upon her head a crown of 12 stars. That woman represents Israel, sisters and brothers. This, But this represents the Israel that's really in knowledge. Not only physical Israel, but the spiritual Israelites. That among, from among the strangers that have some knowledge. This represents all of them. Go ahead and read. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, uh -huh. and pain to be delivered. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Uh -huh. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. That lets you know that the dragon is the one that's, that rule those nations, don't it? Because he looked like the nation that he ruled, even though he's a cherub angel with four faces, cow feet, six wings, and eyes everywhere. He stood before the woman. Go ahead and read. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. I mean, he brought a third of the angels with him. Go ahead. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. Uh -huh. Or to devour her child as soon as it was born. Go ahead. And she brought forth the man child, who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Now the dragon stood before the woman. He did win. That's during the Roman Empire. That part of his, his uh, 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 kingdom, he killed Jesus, but then the Lord did something. He rose and went on back to heaven, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be killed. That's so right. And he sat down on the right hand of the Father. But what happened to the woman? Go ahead and read. And the child was caught up into God into his throne, uh -huh. and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepare to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Twelve hundred and sixty days, don't it? This thing took off from the time that Jesus rose and it took clean on down to a time beyond us that's called the Great Tribulation. And the Lord said, this woman, still, let's show you, you have to understand things, sisters and brothers, because from the time that Jesus was taken up until the time this woman, we're talking a couple thousand years, much close to 3,000 years before this thing take place. You understand what I'm saying? But how long is she going to be in the wilderness? Three and a half years. You can't get away from that seven year, can you? Mm. Now let's go and, and, the, and when you place a safety in the wilderness, let me show you why, what's going to happen once you get there. Okay? Let's go into Psalms, the 91st chapter. 91st Psalm. Because once you get there, this is what you can ex expect. And what we're going to find out, sisters and brothers, is that there ain't nothing new under the sun. This is what I like about the God of this Bible. He lets you know what's going on. He says, you won't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Look to see what I did yesterday. That's right. When he brought Egypt, Israel out of Egypt, how many did he take to heaven? None. If you want to know that when a person dies, whether they go to heaven or not, he said, do what they did to me. Go to the graveyard, open up the grave, and see if the body's in there. If the body's in there, he ain't going nowhere. Because when they come to the sepulchre, they didn't find none of me. That's right. Think about it, sister and brother. We were going to church, and practicality have been removed. Just plain old common sense have been removed. Oh, that's not Sister Jones in the casket there. That's a shell. She made her homecoming. Look like she, that's what she looked like two weeks ago when she was breathing. This is what I'm saying, Sister and Brother. Where, where in the Bible did the Lord remove common sense? Verse 1, 91 and 1. This is why you want to get to this place. Go ahead and read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's a secret place. It's secret. The world don't know about it. We talking about it, but ain't nobody else talking about it. And you're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Go ahead and read. I will say of the Lord, 
He is my refuge and my fortress. Uh -huh. My God in him will I trust. Go ahead. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler uh -huh. and from the noise and pestilence. Go ahead. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Uh -huh. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. See, that's what's going to be your shield and your buckler. The Lord's truth, sisters and brothers. If you know that, you know where to go and when to go. And if you walked in it, you're clean enough to go. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, uh -huh. nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, uh -huh. nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. All this is going to be happening during great tribulation. Go ahead and read. A thousand shall fall at thy side, uh -huh. and ten thousand at thy right hand. Go ahead. But it shall not come nigh thee. Uh -huh. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Ain't nobody. Nobody on the earth can make this claim but the people that are in the wilderness, the Lord's place of safety. you be able to see it, but ain't nothing going to come and deal with you. Only with your eyes you're going to see the reward of the wicked. Go ahead. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Uh-huh. There shall no evil befall thee. Go ahead. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee uh -huh. to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, sisters and brothers, is this something new? This ain't nothing new. That's the way the Lord operates. He don't have to steal you off the earth to protect you. He set aside a place or he put you where he wants you to be. And he tells his angels, you take care of, take them where I want them to be and overlook them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus chapter 23. That's why when people tell what well, the Lord said this, I said, is that right? I'm going to go and see if you've done it before. Exodus chapter 23. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 20. Exodus chapter 23. And verse 20. Read it. Behold, I send an angel before thee. The Lord said, I send an angel before thee. What is he going to do? To keep thee in the way. Ain't that what we just said? Yeah. To keep you in the way, finish that. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That angel is going to conduct you. And then he's going to protect you. And ain't nobody going to shoot one bullet over there to harm you. You all understand what I'm saying? They ain't going to be able to do nothing to you when you get to the phrase of safety. That angel took care of every need that Israel had. So when we go to the wilderness, the Lord go, he's an angel. This time he's going to put more than one over you. And they ain't going to let nothing happen to you, sister and brother. These are the things that you have got to understand. Now let's go back to the 12th chapter of Revelation. 12th chapter of Revelation. That's why I know. You don't have to fear nobody else but God. You fear him and he'll make everybody else fear you. Yes, Revelation 12. We're going to start reading at verse 14. Revelation 12 and verse 14. Because Satan, he is after this woman. And he wants to catch up with, this is the Lord's, spiritual and part of physical people that got some sense, physical Israel, and also strangers that are spiritual Israel has got some sense, have learned this thing and sat down and, and got this thing right. See, the word of God is not to Israel, it is through Israel. You understand what I'm saying? We're supposed to teach everybody else this thing. That's right. Because he is the God of all people. Right. Not the God of a few. That's why, that's why I marvel at how people be few. Everybody got God on their side. If everybody had God on their side, then everybody would love one another. It's all that simple. How am I going to kill you in the name of the Lord? Something wrong with that. Sure is. Verse 14, go ahead. Until the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. So that means this woman didn't have no wings. She didn't sprout no wings. These wings represent power. 
We're going to break it all down because I want you to understand this. To the one who was given two wings of a great eagle, go ahead and read. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, uh -huh. where she is nourished for a time. One year. And time. Add two more, that's three. And a half a time. You know, that's what it said in Daniels, didn't it? The Lord is connecting this thing to let you know it is the same three and a half years. So, because he knew that there was going to be great deception, Satan going to put it out there, oh, it's going to be seven years of tribulation, but you ain't got to worry about it because he ain't going to break the covenant. It didn't say break, it said confirm. He ain't going to break the covenant and tell the midst of the week. Now, you land leave back, well, I got me three and a half years, all over the news, free trips to the Middle East, By boat, plane, no money. All you got to do is get on. You go, oh, I ain't worried about it. I got three years to cool out. <laughs> and you're going to get caught right smack dab in the middle. I'm going to tell you all something that most people don't know. I maybe those feel as old people remember. Don't you know when the times got rough in the 60s that they had going around, if we pay your way back to Africa, would you go? Don't you know that after slavery was abolished, that the United States sets up Liberia, and the people in Liberia, a lot of them are children of slaves? The time going to come again. But you ain't going to be ready for it. You know why? Because you're going to be waiting to be raptured off the heaven. Or either if you're real smart, you're going to wait seven years before you be raptured off the heaven. But go ahead. From the face of the serpent. So, so she was put in the wilderness to hide her from the face of Satan. Because that's whose organization, remember? And it's going to be there for three and a half years. Go ahead and read. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. This army sister and brother going to try to catch this woman. But what's the Lord going to do? Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Uh-huh. And the earth helped the woman. Go ahead. And the earth opened her mouth. Uh -huh. And swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So the Lord said, I'm gonna, the, the Lord going to make sure that don't nothing happen to you. Go ahead and read. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of, of her seed. Now, that's at the beginning of the great tribulation. He was angry with the woman. He couldn't get her. So what did he do? He turned on her seed. What constitute her seed? Read it. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. To the people that keeping the commandments, they know the commandments good. They hold the testimony of Jesus. But there's somewhere in their mind they just think, well, I shouldn't have to go to no wilderness. The Lord can protect me anywhere. And he can, but he said he will not. He will protect you in this one place. So now, if you are a commandment keeper and you believe in the testimony of Jesus, all of it, and if you ain't in the wilderness, who did the serpent, who did the book say the serpent going to turn on? Her seed. Those are the saints that he's going to make a war with That's right. for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, sisters and brothers, knowledge is everything. But when the Lord said, gave the woman the wings of a great eagle, let me show you what he's talking about. That ain't the first time. He did this so we can go and look at this. Let's go into Exodus 19 chapter. Exodus chapter 19. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Exodus 19 and 1. Just letting you know, sisters and brothers, the Lord put certain words out there, put certain keys out there, so you know, yeah, it's me again. I'm doing the same thing again. So if you're righteous, you can be among them. Verse 1, go ahead. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Go ahead. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And there Israel camped before the mount. Go ahead. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, uh -huh. Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob, 
and tell the children of Israel. Talking about the same people, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Uh Uh-huh. And how I bear you on eagles' wings. Uh Uh-huh. And brought you unto myself. Because that's what the Lord be doing when he take you to the wilderness day. He ain't saying he's going to make you spot eagles' wings. What he's saying is through his power. Ain't nobody going to get in his way. He's going to show you where to go. And he's going to give you the transportation. And he's going to tell them angels, I don't want nobody laying a finger on my saints. And you will get on to the will. That's why I say he's going to flood, going to come after you. He ain't going to allow nothing to lay a finger on you. But you got to have this thing right. You will get there. And we will know it because when we get through, we're going to see the signs. It's time. I mean, the Lord gives you so many things to let you know it's time until you have to be ready, Charles, not to see it. And he is dead as well as blind. <laughs> so in those days, he said, I'm going to put you, uh, I gave you eagle's wing and bring you unto myself. Because where was the Lord? He was in the wilderness, sister and brother. Now let's see what else he said about this woman. Let's go into Hosea. The second chapter. Hosea, the second chapter. That's why I wonder, when I look at this doctrine that came from Rome, I wonder what book they read, sisters and brothers. It don't fit anything. And now I'm looking at, got these little specials on TV now, trying to pour water on the Bible. Well, you know, this passage wasn't ever. And then I go in the Old Testament, I see the prophet say, yeah, it was there. You just didn't know about it. This must be added. I go in the prophet say, yeah, it wasn't added. The Lord have already had his prophets to say it. You just didn't know about it. Sometimes I just get my books and cricket and put, just put a dot in all them lies. I don't think they're lying on purpose. They're lying on the ignorance. But no matter what the reason you lie, a lie is a lie. But if you don't have no knowledge, you don't know about it, do you? Right. That's why I don't look at none of these religious stories like Noah, <laughs> Son of God, and all this. Come on, I, I just critique it so bad I want to kick my TV out. So I, <laughs> and you think I'd pay money to go to a movie to see a lie? Like I said to Noah, somebody said that, they, that, that uh, Cain got on the ark. Do you know how many generations it was after Cain when Noah made the ark? How can you be that stupid? That's why I don't look at stuff like this. You understand what I'm saying? King got on the up. Hosea the second chapter, and we're gonna start reading at verse 14. Hosea 2 and 14. 2 and 14. Okay, read. Therefore, behold, I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness uh-huh. and speak comfortably into her. That's that woman that we was talking about. You understand? Which is Israel's physical and also spiritual Israel. See, you know why I know? Because when Israel came out of the Egypt, the Lord had it written. It was a mixed multitude. And when he addressed them, he said, Hear, O Israel. Not one time did he say, Hear, O Israel, and stranger. Because everybody that followed Israel out of Egypt at that time was spiritually Israel because they believed in the power of the God of Israel. Do y'all understand? It's going to be the same thing in the last days. So he said, look, I'm going to lure her in the wilderness and I'm going to speak comfortably to her. Go ahead and read. And I will give her her vineyards from thence. And you're going to know what your inheritance is when you come out of there. Now, don't you know something? The Lord have it written to when they start passing out them inheritance, the stranger that's your among them, they got to get a piece of it too. I read that to a Hebrew brother one time at his place and he put me out of his clay. No problem. What else did he have? When you ain't got no answer, fight. That's right. Go ahead and read. In the valley of Achor for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of a youth. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shall call me no more Baalai. For I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth. Ishai mean my husband, sister and brother. Because the Lord has always married his church. That's why he called her a woman. Israel and everybody had come a part of it. 
And I'm going to take the word of Baal out of your mouth. Go ahead and read. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. Uh-huh. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beast of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. Uh-huh. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. Uh-huh. I will make them to lie down safely. Now, when he say going to make a covenant with the beast, that means he's going to take you back to pre-Noah days on the other side of the flood. Animals ain't going to jump people no more. They're not snakes and are not going to bite people anymore. You'd be able to go to the zoo and scratch the mane of a lion. A lion, all they're going to do is lick your hand. Not bite at all. You'd be playing with everything. You'd be back the way it was. Remember, the animal was not wild and dangerous in the beginning. Because of man's sin. Right. The Lord put that thing there. He said, but now this time, I'm going to take this thing off. I'm going to make a covenant with the animals with you. Go ahead and read what verse? 19. Uh-huh. And I will betroth thee into me forever. And I'm going to marry you forever. Betroth in here. It's talking about marriage. See, betroth is supposed to mean uh, 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 promise. But I do know the Lord is going to marry you. Because he tell you, he talks about the marriage of the lamb. And he called Israel his wife. So this is a word that's misplaced. But being that you know all the rest, that's why I tell people, know all the rest of the things and you know what belong here. He will, I'm going to marry you to me. Go ahead and read. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness uh -huh. and in judgment Go ahead. and in loving kindness uh -huh. and in mercies. And I'm going to do that. Go ahead. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord. And then you're going to know because when he, this betrothal is married, that is a covenant. Don't you know that marriage is a covenant, sister and mother? You are going to be a part of God's covenant because he only deal with covenants. His wife or his children. That means that we have swapped agreements. You do what I say, I'll let you live forever. Now let's go look at this wilderness. Let's go into Isaiah the 35th chapter. Because he's going to bring you there. And there ain't no place where the Lord have not taken his people. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah 35. Isaiah 35. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 35. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, read. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. Uh-huh. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. See, that's the whole thing. It's all desert now. If you look at all this great, they can't do nothing with it. They can't irrigate it. They can't do nothing. It is uninhabitable. That's the Sinai Peninsula. They ain't got no trees or nothing out there. Might have a cactus here or there. He said... It's going to be happy for the Lord's people because the desert is going to blossom for us. Go ahead and read. It will blossom abundantly uh -huh. and rejoice even with joy and singing. Uh -huh. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. Israel is the glory of Lebanon. You are. You shall be given unto it. Go ahead and read. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. Uh -huh. They shall see the glory of the Lord uh -huh. and the excellency of our God. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, uh -huh. and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. That's so much spiritual blind, and un it might be physical, sister and brother, but I know the spiritual blind, sure enough, gonna be eyes going to be open. And the ears of the deaf, that means you're going to hear this word. Go ahead and read. Six. Then shall the lame man leap at uh -huh. the heart, Go ahead. and the tongue of the dumb seen. For in the wilderness shall waters break out uh -huh. and streams in the desert. Then it could be physical, sister and brother, but what's going to happen? Water's going to break out and springs are going to pop up in the desert. Go ahead and read. And the parched ground shall become a pool. Uh -huh. And the thirsty land springs of water. Uh -huh. And the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. The Lord is going to do this, sister and brother. It's going to be even better than it was when Moses them came out. He ain't going to have to rain manna down from heaven. He's going to bring it all out the ground. Go ahead and read. And a highway shall be there. Uh -huh. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. That's why I know the righteous people are going to be in this first. Let's go there. 
The way of holiness. Ain't going to be no fools there. Go ahead and read. The unclean shall not pass over it. Uh-huh. But it shall, be, it shall be for those, the wayfaring men. Go ahead. Though fools shall not err therein. If you are, you're going to get educated quick. You ain't going to make no error there. Go ahead and read. No lion shall be there. Uh-huh. Nor any ravenous beast shall uh-huh. go up thereon. Go ahead. It shall not be there found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. That's the redeemed. These are the people that the Lord didn't recover. This is all going to take place right over there on Sinai Peninsula, Assistant Bella. Some people dispute it. I look at the timeline and I say it can't be no place there. But if it is there, when this thing starts happening, wherever the devils are, ain't you going to know something going on? That's right. They're going to be looking at some miraculous phenomenon taking on. Trees and grass is coming up in the desert. Water's breaking out. And you know what you're going to be doing? Packing your clothes. <laughs> Because you know what's finna to come down. Go ahead and read. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. That's what the ransom. He, you are the ransom. You shall return. Go ahead and read. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Uh-huh. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and signs shall flee away. Ain't going to be no sorrow when you get there. Let's go on to Isaiah the 40, first chapter. Isaiah chapter 41. See, the Lord have all this, but you've been in church all your life. You ain't never heard of this kind of stuff. The first thing is you don't associate yourself with Israel. Even if you are a stranger, you need to know this. Because if you don't get to the place of safety, you are in trouble. This is for everybody. Ain't just for Israel only. Because people don't understand the adoption. Israel wasn't Israel in the beginning. Israel was the children of Jacob. The Lord adopted Jacob and changed his name to Israel. And the Lord had Moses to go tell Pharaoh, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So if Israel is the firstborn, what does that imply? Some more coming. Can't be more Israelites physically because he adopted the whole nation. That means he's going to adopt all the rest of the nation. He's going to do that during the thousand-year millennium period, but some individuals can be adopted now. This has gone by the world because ain't nobody looking. Was it verse 17? Let's start at verse 17. Go ahead. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Uh -huh. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. See, in the beginning, he just brought water out of a rock, didn't he? But he's going to make this whole place, rivers of water and springs of water, vegetation everywhere because it's going to be a large. And in fact, you're going to run into your real sisters and brother saints there. Because a lot of people will have found out about this place of safety when it comes down. So we're going to support a big body of water, so you're gonna, a big body of people, so you're going to need a lot of land right. to support it. See, God is a practical God. He knows we need food and we need water. So he's going to prepare that. And if you got some sense... Now, some knowledge, you're going to be watching that, and you're going to know exactly what's going on while the old world is marveling, and uh, and why, and they're going to wonder, why is it that I can't get in there? Because the man is going to be standing right there. No, you can't come in here. <laughs> That's right. It's for my people that have walked in my ways and kept my law, even if you're an Israelite. Oh, but you're going to come later on, but not in the beginning. Go ahead and read. What verse? 19. Uh-huh. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitter tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together. They ain't never had all these different species of trees grow in one place. But all of them going to blow in the wilderness. Because all of them going to have a significant uh, 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 thing that, that, Israel, that the people going to need. 
Israel, spiritual and physical. Join us on the Sabbath day live via the internet. Log into our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath day live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. If you enjoy our program, we would appreciate your donations to help defer the cost of continuing this work. Send donations to the Israel of God, 2515 East 75th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago.